Hello, my name is Bilal Sukkar, and in this short video, I'm going to cover the BIM Maturity Index. Before covering uh, BIM Maturity Index, uh, we need to discuss a little bit what is BIM Maturity and how does it differ from BIM Capability. I invite you, if you haven't watched them yet, to, to look at the BIM stages and BIM steps which cover BIM Capability. So BIM Maturity is the gradual and continual improvement in quality, repeatability, predictability within an available BIM capability, meaning we need to have a, a BIM capability. If you remember, BIM capability is the ability to do something, the ability to generate a model of a certain type, the ability to generate a cost plan, a schedule, a set of specifications, etc. while maturity is the quality of that deliverable. And when we say quality, really, we are discussing its repeatability and whether it's predictable or not. BIM maturity is expressed as a BIM maturity levels within a BIM maturity index. And these uh, maturity levels are actually BIM performance uh, improvement milestones. And uh, maturity, when we use that term maturity, we're really focusing on organizations, teams, and whole markets. So really the term BIM maturity does not really apply to um, individuals. To measure BIM maturity using the BIM framework, we, we, there's one specific index to be used, which is called the BIM maturity index, which has five maturity levels. First level is ad hoc, also referred to this as A or low maturity. The second level is defined, sometimes referred to this as level B or uh, medium low. And the third level is managed, uh, it's referred to, to it as C, medium level of maturity and uh, integrated is level four, sometimes referred to it as medium high as well. And the last uh, level is optimized, uh, also called level E or high maturity. So let's uh, just uh, uh, explain this a little bit more using an example. So if we're looking at a company and we're trying to establish its BIM maturity, the first thing we need to do is establish its capability in a certain topic or across topics. Let's take one topic, uh, for example, uh, BIM training. If a company generates or, you know, or delivers BIM training to its employees, we say it's got BIM training capability. If it doesn't, then it doesn't have that capability. Now, to measure maturity, of course, we need to have that capability in place. So let's say we have a company which has a, a training, uh, um, it does train its staff. So we look at uh, the, 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 the company and we look at it. How is the training done? Is it uh, done in an ad hoc way, meaning you know, does to, to deliver training, does a, a, a individual needs to go to someone and ask for training? So there's no, no plan, no, there's no defined pathway for learning for an individual. We we'll call that level of maturity ad hoc. If we go up one level to level B or de defined, uh, if a company has a defined uh, approach to uh, BIM training, for example, it's got a training manual, it's got a training plan, a training program, then uh, that level of maturity is considered to be higher than ad hoc, and we call that it defined. Defined really refers typically to the availability of written uh, uh, requirements, uh, written procedures, programs, etc. Now, another level up would be managed is that when you have an individual uh, responsible for that specific capability, let's say you've got a, a training BIM trainer, or you've got an HR manager managing uh, the training for all staff, so there is a system of management attached to the defined uh, training uh, manual, and it's not done in, in a block uh, way. So a managed system would look like, for example, uh, for each individual, uh, uh, there is a plan, or maybe it would be based on, uh, on time or on certain targets or certain profiles. Maybe they've got 20 hours of training a year, or maybe a certain percentage of their time, etc., need to be spent uh, learning or developing themselves and others. Now, when we look at the higher level of maturity, uh, we call it level D or integrated. This medium high level of maturity is really linked to other. Uh, topics. So really when we're looking at integrated, not, not no longer looking just at uh, training, we're looking at the integration of training with other capabilities. To give you an example, if in, an individual starts in a company, someone's been hired and they need to start on Tuesday, uh, if you have an integrated uh, level of maturity within that organization, you would assume that uh, the software needed by that person is prepared on Monday where they sit, maybe the hardware is already ready, maybe the training plan has been set in place, a mentor has been assigned, etc. 
The highest level of uh, maturity is optimized, and optimized really refers to continuous improvements. This is where a company, although they've got already the manuals, they've got the managers, and they've got the integrated systems, and never satisfied with them, and there's always a system of continuing uh, renewal. So these are the, the five levels of maturity, and just as a reminder, the levels of maturity apply to capability. So you need to have the capability first, and then you can apply uh, the, the maturity index in order to assess the quality of that ability. This uh, image here uh, shows uh, the maturity levels again, uh, but highlights that to, to move from one maturity level to another, uh, you have to pass through certain uh, maturity steps or maturity areas. If you uh, haven't watched uh, the BIM capability steps, uh, please do so because this, is, this uh, model really um, is a continuation of the model uh, referring to steps. Remember BIM capability steps between stages you've got uh, steps. Here between maturity levels we also have something similar to steps, but we call them areas. And they also follow the same types, meaning uh, as in uh, BIM capability steps, we have technology steps, process steps, and policy steps. Here, between ad hoc and define, and between define and manage, we also have uh, technology areas, policy areas, and process areas. And they use the same uh, you know, uh, hierarchy uh, of topics like uh, BIM capability stages. So the, you've got within, for example, within technology, you've got software, hardware, and network. You can look at the capability of an organization in technology, and you can also look at its maturity in technology. Same thing with regards to hardware and network, or we're looking at the process, let's say we're looking at workflows. We can look at the availability of workflows, but also using any maturity approach, we can look at the maturity of these workflows, whether they're you know, the, the quality, uh, you know, how they're presented, whether they are automated, etc. Now, a way of applying uh, BIM maturity levels and BIM capability stages uh, altogether is using something called the BIM maturity matrix. And uh, the BIM maturity matrix uh, is a, you know, a static file. It's a, it, it's a, it, it's got the levels uh, here, A, B, C, D, uh, and you've got uh, the topics here, which are also organized uh, against uh, stages. Uh, let me open. Um, the PDF file. Please feel free to download this file and use it within your own organization. So let's have a look. So this is the maturity matrix here on the, you can see the first column, you've got technology, uh, which is a you know, BIM field, uh, you've got the process, you've got policy, and then also they're filtered against stages, so stage one, two, and three, and also against scale, which I haven't really covered yet. But the idea is that uh, the, these maturity levels uh, apply differently within organizations or within project teams and within markets. And you can use this metric uh, in order to assess the capability maturity of an organization. All right. Uh, final slide for you is in order to understand uh, better the difference between BIM capability and BIM maturity, I invite you to go to bimthinkspace.com and search for episode 11, where there is a lengthy um, blog post to you discussing the difference between BIM capability and BIM maturity and providing some examples. Thank you for uh, uh, watching this video. Uh, please uh, uh, remember to subscribe to this channel. And if you haven't yet watched the other videos, these videos are related to the maturity. You've got BIM stages, BIM fields, and capability steps. Thank you for attending.